So the interesting thing with the central bank digital currency is that uh, a version of it already exists. Uh, you can see it in China. It's called the Digital One. And you basically have like an app on your phone, which you don't really own the money in it, but you know, you get access to like a digital wallet with currency and you can't ever withdraw the currency. Like you can't actually get cash from it. It's just on your phone and it's controlled by the, that, that's why it's called central bank, right? So it's controlled by a central authority, which gets to decide how much money you have and how much you're allowed to keep. Because if it, it, in some cases, it can also act like um, a coupon, right? So you go to a store and you're buying a, a coupon to, to give as a gift present to someone. Uh, if they don't use it within a year, usually that one expires. So it's kind of the same with the digital currency. It can be set up so that it expires if you don't use it within a certain time so you don't hoard it. It can be set so that you can only buy certain things with it. Uh, the way they're advertising it uh, in the European Union uh, as well as uh, in the UK, they're basically saying that if it's welfare, um, people should only be able to buy food with it. So they shouldn't buy like luxury goods with it. Um, you shouldn't be able to like use the welfare to hoard it so that you buy like an expensive flat screen TV or electronics. But but a lot of people are happy with it. Like I, I genuinely look, you know, most people are concerned. Most people are happy with it because it offers a level of convenience. Like, let's say uh, you're driving your car and you're going over a red light. Now, normally you would get a piece of paper in your mail with the photo informing you that you broke the law, informing you what the punishment is, and then you also have to pay a fine. But in this situation, you don't have to pay a fine. Like, immediately the money is being detracted from your account the moment the photo was taken, and then... If you disagree with it, I guess like you can challenge uh, the decision somewhere else and you're saying, hey, like this money was taken from me. I never went on a red light. This wasn't my car or whatever. But most people lo love this, right? Like the fact that you can pay fines, the fact that you can pay taxes, the fact that you can pay rent like automatically without having to type anything in. The convenience of it, like you're going into a store, you don't have to go to the cashier. You're just uh, getting your face scanned. And automatically the money is being detracted from your account. You don't have to have your wallet with you. You don't have to show credit card or anything. It's just like facial recognition software that's tied to the CBDC. And a lot of people like are supporting this. They, they genuinely love it. Unfortunately, and uh, you have like the people that are proposing it, especially the ones in the United Kingdom, they flat out say that the digital currency is designed so that the employer or the government gets to control what type of goods you're allowed to purchase. Um, they can make uh, gradual taxation. So like, let's say you have a carbon quota on how much uh, carbon you're allowed to spend per month. Uh, for example, how much meat you're buying, how much gas you're buying. And uh, if you go over it, then the next product can become more expensive because they were paying taxes for the government for buying extra meat or for purchasing extra gas. Your employer can decide what you are and aren't allowed to do with the cash. Uh, there was a situation in China where many people wanted to protest the banks and uh, their health pass, which is tied to the CBDC system, their health pass went red. In other words, even though they weren't sick of COVID, like there wasn't even that type of question, their health pass going red made it so that they cannot use public transportation to join the protest. So they couldn't uh, take any trains, they couldn't take uh, any Ubers, like nothing. They were stuck. And this is a very good way that the government can use in order to prevent people from protesting, in order to prevent people from traveling. Uh, like, for example, you can have like these 15-minute cities that they're advocating, and hypothetically, they can make it so that you can only spend money within that general area. And this already has happened in human history during the industrial uh, period, where... Uh, you had like a factory that was owning a town and uh, usually they would pay you in funny money, like money that was only recognized within that town. And this was in order to keep the employee from leaving. And we saw in a previous video that I showed you with the CEO that's advocating exactly for this. Like in his opinion, uh, the relationship between employer and employee isn't a contract where both parties have something to gain. It's more like a relationship between slave and master between owner and peasant. And it's uh, very concerning. I mean, uh, the fact that people are, are agreeing to this. 
However, there's also some good news. As you can see here, uh, Representative Tom uh, Emmer is introducing a bill to ban the Federal Reserve from creating a CBDC. So according to him, a CBDC is nothing more than a CCP-style surveillance tool that can be weaponized to oppress the American way of life. It's going to be back in the People's House where House Republicans are ready to continue delivering on our promises to the American people. One important aspect of our common sense agenda is actually protecting Americans' financial privacy, particularly when it pertains to this lawless administrative state. That's why I reintroduced a bill yesterday called the Central Bank Digital Currency Anti-Surveillance State Act, which puts a check on unelected bureaucrats and ensures that the United States digital currency policy upholds our values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free market competitiveness. Recent actions from the Biden administration have made it clear that they are not only itching to create a digital dollar, but they're willing to trade Americans' right to financial privacy for a surveillance-style CBDC. This bill ensures the future of crypto is in the hands of the American people, not the administrative state. By prohibiting the Federal Reserve from creating a tool with unfettered insight into Americans' financial data. If not open, permissionless, and private, like cash, a CBDC is nothing more than a CCP-style surveillance tool that can be weaponized to oppress the American way of life. Right, so uh, even if this bill wouldn't pass, at least it brings this conversation into the public. Most people aren't aware of what CBDC is doing. Uh, the way it's presented to the public, uh, again, it's for convenience, uh, the ease of purchase, a way out of inflation, uh, extra security so that uh, there's less uh, corruption and uh, you know less illegal transactions taking place. But in reality, if you actually look at the legislation and you look at what the proponents are saying, is it's a way of control. And uh, you see in places like Australia, there's already people complaining that the government is starting to take away money from circulation. And uh, banks, like in many other places, are just flat out refusing to do business in cash. And the only thing you get is like an ATM, which uh, puts a limit on how much cash you can withdraw a day. And even the number of ATMs is starting to dwindle. So the concept of a cashless society where you literally would not be able to have paper money is uh, definitely being pushed. And it's up to people and senators like uh, this guy in order to try to give people who do not want this to happen to give them a voice. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.